Good day everybody and welcome to the beginning of a new series of mine, Long Overdue, where I review and analyse some of my favourite films. The series will involve looking at characters, symbolism, mise-en-scene, cinematography, social political issues surrounding the film, and of course, subtext. So if you haven't seen the film, it may be best you don't watch this video as it will not only be full of spoilers, but will also restrict you from making your own conclusions to the film. Now let's begin. After four viewings over four years, I think it is time for me to finally dig into what is one of my top 10 favourite films of all time. When I did a quick letterbox review two years ago stating further analysis to come, this is it. Since 1976, Taxi Driver is a film that has continually stunned audiences for its mesmerising atmosphere, slow pace and endless subjectivity. Rarely has a film captivated me on such a level. From start to finish, there is a scream of consciousness flow to the film, and on a first viewing, you really don't know what is going to happen next. There is no initial plot, and our story is narrated by our protagonist, Travis Bickle, a somewhat unreliable source of truth in the narrative. Let's deconstruct who Travis is. Where did he come from? Where is his family? Why is he a loner? There is such a range of interpretations behind what he represents as a character socially, politically, and philosophically. Let's try to understand him first by looking at information Travis himself tells us. One of the first scenes at the taxi depot, he notes that he was in the marines, even stating what division. So is he a war veteran? In another scene when we see him shirtless, we notice a large scar. Perhaps this is a war wound. This is some of the only hints whether he really was in the marines or not, as you must keep in mind this story is through Bickle's perspective. We will come back to this more in depth later. Travis is a loner. Scorsese accidentally shows this in shots like this, where we see him trapped and confined. Then in shots like this, we see his isolation from the world around him. He has an almost ghost-like presence. The taxi becomes the ultimate symbol of the story. The opening shot has a taxi driving through the fog and smoke like a big yellow coffin. Travis prefers taking long shifts, particularly at night. While this shows he wants to be alone, it also says the opposite. We must remember that being a taxi driver involves talking to a lot of different people. This could be an attempt by him to socialise. He lives alone in a grimy apartment and doesn't seem to care about buying clothes, furniture or leisurely items, but he does go to adult movies. However, every time we see him there, he never seems to appear aroused or interested in what's on the screen. This tells us so much about Travis as a character. He is trying to feel something because he is so numb. He has no girlfriend and does not seem interested in sleeping with prostitutes. Then this brings us to Betsy, the woman he begins an interest in, almost in a voyeuristic way, until he finally enters the building where she works and asks her for a date. Immediately with how he watched her, asked her out and begins a friendship with her, we know that Travis is awkward and shy and potentially has a problem talking to women. We definitely know there's something off about him. This is best shown when he takes her to the adult movies. Not only does this inform us of his inability to relate to women, but it shows just how out of touch he is with socialising. Overall, he seems to have an inability to start and maintain healthy relationships. Now that we have discussed who Travis may be as a character, it is important to see how he develops during the film. From the beginning, we can see he is deeply troubled by something, which is clarified by a few things he says and, of course, ends up doing. He tells us about the scum of the earth in the streets. He even proclaims this to the man running for mayor, adding to it that it's full of filth. His view of the world is dark and pessimistic. His loneliness and disconnect only adds to how he feels about his environment. To me, one way to see Travis's whole transformation is one of total anarchy and rebellion, but also about an individual just wanting justice and standing up for himself. Here is a man who would not take it anymore. A man who stood up against the scum, the cunts, the dogs, the filth, the shit. Here is someone who stood up. This voiceover narration excellently explains the psyche of Travis. Here's a man who would not take it anymore. A man who stood up against the scum, the cunts, the dogs. One of the best elements to the film is while it is narrated by Travis, we really don't know what he's planning or going to do next. Keeping that information from us, Scorsese makes this a very suspenseful and enigmatic experience on first viewing. We see Travis changing his appearance, buying weapons, target shooting and deeply contemplating. His punk-like hairstyle reinforces the idea of his social rebellion, and with this new haircut and going to a political rally makes it even more anti-establishment. He has had enough and now he's going to take matters into his own hands. Taxi Driver is truly a film about the city, and the way Martin Scorsese and cinematographer Michael Chapman have visually portrayed it brings us into this low environment. With car fumes, neon lights, trash, prostitutes and thugs on the streets, you can almost smell and feel the grit. 
In so many scenes, we simply see the taxi roaming through New York, and we are in the viewpoint of Travis as he passes by people and places. We get a real sense of entrapment and social distance thanks to the many shots clearly in his perspective, and he is always an onlooker. Almost like a night phantom or a ghost, he seems to go around almost invisibly. Which then brings us to the concept of alienation. Many films during the late 60s and early 70s have been known for their countercultural ideas, but also commenting on American society. Travis is ultimately a figure of alienation. We can see this in his only social relationship, which is with the other taxi drivers. Travis is quiet and is not much of a conversationalist, and seems uninterested in what they have to say. Furthermore, you can see a sense of resentment and dislike in this as he distances himself. The famous scene when he watches the glass bubbling away it is a comment on his mental state. Something is building up inside him. We can see his loneliness even in the scenes when he is surrounded by people. As he walks down the New York streets, he is without a friend and no one understands how he feels. One of my favourite shots in the film is when we see Travis talking to Betsy on the phone and we suddenly track to the hallway where we can see the world outside. On first viewing, this really surprised me and it just shows how camera movement and framing are so key to meaning in a film. We hear his phone conversation and look through the distant hallway, the world outside that Travis isn't a part of. This is reinforced as we watch people walk past and cars go by. Then Travis walks up this hallway in a shot that almost makes it look like he is caged, despite walking towards the world. Now to return to the idea of alienation and the illusion that Travis is truly a war veteran. One interpretation of the film is that it is a comment on a post-Vietnam America, more specifically its soldiers. Perhaps it was the horrible things he had seen and done that haunts him, causing his emotional distance, anxiety and frustration. For me I think it is more than just a comment on war veterans. I think it is looking at a larger picture of a generation of people feeling somewhat out of place. Travis is the ultimate symbol of this. And then it is towards the end of the film it almost feels like it's playing with genre and an attack on Americanness. Like a classic Hollywood western, Travis becomes a rescuer, a somewhat heroic figure. Here we are seeing an early anti-hero in American cinema. Comparing him to John Wayne, we see no horse and shotgun, but a taxi and a revolver. Then the role of Iris comes in, played by an incredibly young but talented Jodie Foster. She is the princess of the story that Travis tries to rescue. Which brings us to the film's finale. Like an absolute machine, Travis relentlessly shoots people down to get to Iris, with his many weapons attached, ready to eliminate any obstacle. This scene of cathartic violence is one of the reasons this film resonates with so many people. The whole film builds up to this bloody climax, making it all the more shocking. At the time Scorsese was actually told by censors that he had to desaturate the scene, and I feel this worked to his advantage. It gives this whole scene a much drearier and dirty texture. Then we see Travis putting his fingers to his head, like a gun pulling the trigger. This is a great piece of acting. His exhausted but somewhat relieved expression tells us about his cathartic outburst of destruction. Perhaps pointing the gun on himself reflects that he can now rest in death. Taxi Driver truly has one of the most intriguing film endings, with a news article regarding what he had done, his release and a note from Iris' parents thanking him for bringing their daughter back. Then we get the final scene, once more he is in the taxi. And in enters Betsy, the woman he had wanted. In this moment it ties to the idea of the guy gets the girl convention, but Scorsese really plays with it. He says hello to her, but he doesn't seem as interested anymore as he rejects her invitation to go to her apartment. This can be seen as Travis now having stability with himself. He has found peace. And then, in this end shot that I can never seem to get my head around, has him give an intense stare into the rear view mirror as the soundtrack jingles. Perhaps it is simpler than I think it is. Perhaps this is Travis just looking back at the past and driving onwards through the city. Looking ahead. The film as a whole has a stream of consciousness flow. There is no concern for act structures or real character arcs. Of course we see character development but the film for the most part is like a disjointed dream. The cinematography, performances, careful direction and music all make this happen, which is why Taxi Driver is absolutely one of my favourite films. Thank you everyone for listening to my analysis of Taxi Driver and it was a real pleasure to finally get talking about it in depth. 
as you can see, it's just such a magical and intriguing film, and every time I watch it, I just come to some other conclusion, and I still have that feeling of just getting lost in the film. I would love to see what you think of my analysis, and I would like to see what you see in the film. Thanks again everybody for stopping by in the 70s marathon, and stay tuned for the next videos.